All right, it is the top of the hour. So welcome everyone to the UX functional update. Um, just gonna jump right in. So first we'll go over the UX improvements that are being made in 9.5. To start, we have trial and license purchase. So as part of making EE the default download in GitLab, we needed to allow for the activation of a trial and the ability to purchase full licenses from inside of GitLab. Uh, so when a GitLab EE instance does not have a license, uh, and this will include any previous license or trial license, there will be a link to activate a trial. Um, trial activation page consists of a, a basic form. Uh, all trial licenses will be sent out a 10,000 seat license. Submitting the form will automatically activate a trial and create sales leads and display confirmation to the user that the trial is activated. So continuing on that, uh, when the trial license has seven days remaining, there'll be a message above the header to remind users of this. Uh, the message should only be shown to admin users since they're the only ones that have the ability to actually purchase. Um, if the trial expires, there will be a message to show the status of trial license uh, expiration above the header. In the trial period, the primary button on the license page will be a buy license button. And in the details table, there will be it will show free trial remains X amount of days to indicate that this is a trial license and remind them of when the license will expire. So lastly, this is a big one, <laughs> uh, as part of making EE the default download on GitLab, we will promote EE features when there is no license for that particular feature. Um, this is a meta issue to organize all of the areas of promotion. Uh, so one of those is promoted. Oh, sorry, I thought someone had a question. <laughs> um, so uh, this will, first one here is to promote Service Desk. Uh, the banner will appear if the license plan is GitLab uh, EES, since Service Desk is for GitLab EE Premium. Uh, for regular EE on-prem sites, users who never start the GitLab EE trial will see the banner from the issue uh, linked here. GitLab.com users will uh, also see the banner from that issue. Uh, another one is to promote issue boards. So an additional board will appear, which tells users how they can improve the issue boards with the, with the EE edition. Um, and we have some further improvements we're actually working on right now uh, to remove that other XS board. Um, we'll probably be talking about that one in our next functional group update. So another great thing that we're bringing to everyone is the new project templates. So getting started with GitLab can be daunting. Uh, learning all that GitLab has to offer is even more so. So for these reasons, it's helpful to be able to quickly create a new project from a template that has several important things already configured, such as CI, CD, review, apps, et cetera. With GitLab 9.5, we're introducing this ability and a set of templates supporting some of the most common environments, Ruby on Rails, Node Express, and Java Spring. Navigation is an ongoing uh, improvement, so we're going to be moving on to the next stage, and that is to make the sidebar collapsible and add icons. Um, this is something that we had planned for uh, in the beginning, uh, and it was reinforced by the feedback. That was pretty much uh, unanimous that everyone uh, wanted it to be collapsible. Uh, in order to allow for the collapsing and expanding, we're adding one more row anchored to the bottom. Uh, we have also added icons to the first level items in the sidebar to assist with recognition when the sidebar is collapsed. Uh, another feature that we're adding is to add the flyout dropdown to the contextual navigation. So when you're hovering over a section with second level items, a flyout dropdown menu will appear to offer quick access to those se second level sections. When the sidebar is expanded, all sections show the flyout on hover, except for the active section. Uh, the active section already shows all of the sub elements, so there would be no purpose to that flyout. When a section has no subsections, the flyout also doesn't show up for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, to avoid navigation tunnels, we're supporting fast mouse navigation and improved accuracy. Uh, and this is highlighted in that red area in the middle image to kind of show the area that will, uh, you will have to be in to remain uh, have the flyout remain open. Another big issue that we're going to be bringing out in 9.5 is the repo file view as VS Code Editor. 
Um, browsing and editing files using GitLab's current repo browser is a bit cumbersome, slow, maybe not the most intuitive thing. Uh, to solve this issue, we've added a way to browse and edit files that nearly any user will be instantly familiar with. Uh, users will be able to navigate a familiar file tree structure, edit and commit files in one easy to use interface. Uh, this feature is going to roll out 9.5 as an experimental feature, uh, very much as the navigation did. So we can test it and gather feedback. Um, we'll be creating an issue specifically to gather feedback today, uh, similar to the way we did things for the navigation. So up next, we're going to talk about work in progress and unscheduled UX ready issues. Pedro is going to help me out here and present this section. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, so the first up, uh, we're going to look into what we're currently doing, uh, great things at UX team, and also what is already done um, and that can uh, be implemented either by uh, community contributions or uh, internally with the company. So to so give you an overview of uh, what we're uh, doing, of what we've done already, um, there's a total of uh, 113 uh, open issues in CE and EE, where UX work is complete um, and that don't have a release milestone assigned to them yet. Uh, so there's a lot of things that have already been done. Um, and uh, we're just going to show you now some of the, the, the issues that either we're doing already uh, currently or that we are, uh, that are already done. Next. So one of them is uh, the view, the to-do button that uh, we're going real time in everything GitLab. So one of them is to show in real time how uh, marking a to-do uh, to as done or adding that to-do will affect uh, your to-do counter in the header. And we're experimenting now with some animations uh, and feedback to the user. The, the other one is in EE. Uh, you can already use the approval features, which is uh, very uh, useful. Uh, but now we're making um, so that you can continue approving or disapproving, uh, no matter if the, um, the limit has been reached for the approvals. Uh, so reviewers can come back uh, and signal their input uh, without having any uh, effect. Uh, but this encourages continued collaboration uh, and simplifies business rules um, throughout the organization. Uh, the other thing is one of the most requested um, features is the ability to customize uh, the branch name when you're using the create, create branch button uh, in an issue. Uh, so when you're going to create a new branch or create a merge request and a branch at the same time, the default name uh, is shown and you can change it to something else to suit your uh, organization's uh, flow and uh, way of doing things. Uh, a small one, but yet very important, is uh, to display the member role per project. Uh, our user testing revealed uh, that users had trouble knowing their project's membership, uh, if, if they're owner, master developer, or so on. And uh, they weren't able to quickly tell which projects they were a member of when they were exploring all of the projects in their GitLab instance. So we're uh, proposing to add a project membership label uh, to all project lists and uh, to also change the current group membership indication uh, to follow the design uh, that we have for the project lists. Uh, a big revamp uh, is uh, in, in the works for the integration settings page uh, that needed some, some love for some time now. Uh, and so as part of simplifying the settings, uh, we are improving the usability of this particular page. Uh, and now webhooks are going to become just another uh, integration and are no longer treated separately. Um, all active integrations are shown first, allowing users to easily edit, delete, or deactivate them. Uh, integrations are now just called integrations, not project services anymore. Um, and we're adding the logos uh, uh, or symbols associated with each integration so that it makes, gives more color to the page and makes it easier for users to scan and locate the integration or service uh, that they want to activate. Uh, 
Um, and there's a separate section for that where you see all of the logos for all of the brands. Um, another small one, but still important, is the ability uh, to resize the comment boxes. Uh, we recently removed uh, the resize option uh, when you were um, uh, commenting uh, and adding a new comment or editing an uh, existing comment. We removed it because of performance issue. Uh, and uh, when, but when you edit a comment, the form does not auto resize. Uh, and there's no way to resize the box yourself. So this is a frustrating experience. Um, because you're limited to a small frame and the content uh, within a common can get quite uh, long, uh, as we all know. So uh, the form should auto resize when editing an issue to allow the user to see the full message when editing. In terms of uh, security, it's also one of our concerns is improving uh, the perception uh, and also the, the use security practices when you're dealing and using with GitLab uh, and this uh, issue uh, about improving the confirmation before or removing an account uh, came from a suggestion from a HackerOne reporter and improves the confirmation process uh, before removing an account uh, by asking for the password or username of the account uh, depending on whether the account is authenticated externally uh, to GitLab. Um, and so it's something that we really would like to get in um, to so that we can give the reporters some some credit um, And this is it for uh, the UX ready issues uh, back to you, Sarah Awesome, thanks Pedro so uh, I want to talk quickly about UX process uh, UX process is something um, that is not necessarily very visible to the entire company. So I wanted to kind of talk about the way that we work and the improvements that we're making in our workflow so that we can uh, work faster, work smarter, um, and get even more done uh, in a release cycle. So we've created a UX as a big plan uh, in the design uh, repo. Um, a perceived lack of UI consist consistency within GitLab is, is one of the most common negative points referred to by the wider community. Um, so we've created this big plan in order to make sure that we're working steadily towards both cleaning up and establishing GitLab's unique uh, personality and voice. So the meta issue gathers together all the building blocks of a solid UX foundation. Uh, and there are many sub-issues, most of which are, are already in progress or even near completion. Uh, so this is uh, very close to um, really coming together. So here on, on this one slide, we have a color palette. That's something that Pedro has worked quite a bit on, uh, making sure that we have a harmonious color palette. Uh, uniquely GitLab icons. Uh, actually, yep, okay. I want to make sure I didn't have individual slides. <laughs> Uniquely GitLab icons. So we've been using Font Awesome for quite a while, and um, we wanted to really uh, take those uh, icons and, and ramp them up by using uh, our own unique illustrative style. Um, so once in place, the new icons will help to distinguish our, our unique GitLab personality. Um, and vertical rhythm. So establishing a vertical rhythm means that we're keeping vertical spaces between elements on a page consistent with each other. Uh, we do this by selecting a baseline number, which will act as a common denominator to create all of our spacing. Uh, this creates repetition throughout the UI and repetition breeds familiarity. Right now we have a lot of different spacing. I know that front end has uh, created an issue to help clean this up as well. Uh, they noticed that there were a lot of different margins and paddings being used, and this will help address those issues. Um, but getting this uh, repetition and this uh, set spacing um, makes reading easier. Your eyes will glide along the familiar spacing a lot, a lot better. Um, things will just seem to fit together. Um, Pedro, again, has been doing some excellent work on this, researching and putting together a vertical rhythm uh, for for our UI, and this will be across the board. So this is just an example of what we currently have and then the pr proposed vertical rhythm and how that will affect the overall look and feel for each page. 
Uh, so you can have a look at that issue and see how that's all put together. And on the colors, I did just miss one thing. Um, part of this color palette was also tweaking it to make sure that it meets the web content accessibility guidelines. So very, very important. Another huge undertaking uh, for getting our polish, polish and consistency at GitLab is adding our UX design pattern library to craft. So Tori has bravely taken on this enormous task and is currently putting on the finishing touches. Um, this library is shared by the design team and it can be updated for all of us as changes occur. So this allows our designs to remain consistent and up to date across all files without adding the burden of someone having to actually go in and update a set of master files. It makes us a lot faster and a lot more accurate. And then some more small but important improvements. Uh, UI polish, UX debt, uh, the labels, meaning, and usage. Uh, they were being used uh, for a, very, a variety of different issues. Um, so we had a discussion to properly differentiate and use them uh, so there was no confusion. So these labels allow us to have a better overview of the different type of UX work uh, and the relationship between UX and other teams, but especially with the front end team. Uh, then the GitLab design repository has been uh, converted to use GitLab uh, or Git LFS, excuse me. Uh, that helps us to work a lot faster. <laughs> um, it doesn't take so long to download and to upload. Um, Dimitri took this on uh, as a very welcomed improvement. And with the help of Marin, uh, we now have this in process. And organization of work in progress files and contribution guidelines. So part of our workflow in the design repository was a bit outdated. So the team came together to standardize and update the way files and folders are organized. Uh, this consistency helps us onboard new team members, uh, pick up someone else's work if they're out of office and facilitate contributions from pretty much anyone. So a lot of work going on. Any questions? I haven't had a chance to look at the chat, so let me just jump in. I think it's okay so far. Okay so far, <laughs> yeah, it looks like. things very well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I lost some of my notes there for a minute. I was like, well, where'd they go? All right. Well, the last slide, as always, we want to give some shout outs. Uh, we've had a lot of help from a lot of people uh, in the past release, especially with the navigation and in this release with more navigation changes. Um, so we just wanted to give a shout out uh, to everybody. Uh, but particularly these people for um, their different contributions. I won't go through and read them all. Um, you can check out the slide and check out the work that they helped us with. Um, if there's no questions, I will let everyone go. Perfect. Well, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. See you in the team call.